Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you all for attending our media conference this afternoon in regards to the uh, homicides of three females uh, that occurred in Washington County, Virginia. I do have some introductions to make uh, to my far right. is Chief Carl Turner. He's Chief of Johnson City Police Department. Uh, to my uh, close right is Sheriff Dexter Lunsford. He is the Sheriff of Carter County, uh, Tennessee. Uh, both of these jurisdictions had uh, females that were uh, missing and, of course, as a result, uh, homicides. Uh, to my far right, uh, left, I have Josh Cumbo. He's our Washington County Commonwealth Attorney. Uh, next to him, I have uh, Captain Joe Daniels, who is the uh, Bureau of Criminal Investigative Captain for Virginia State Police, 4th Division. Next to him, I have uh, U.S. Marshal Brad Sellers, who is the West Western District U.S. Marshal. And to my immediate left, I have Captain James Blevins. He is my criminal investigative captain. First off, I want to say that our prayers go out to the victims' families in this very tragic event. A Washington County, Virginia man has been charged with three counts of capital murder in relation to the deaths of two missing Tennessee women and a missing 17-year-old female, a juvenile female from Georgia. Approximately two weeks ago, the Washington County, Virginia Sheriff's Office was contacted by law enforcement personnel from the Johnson City Tennessee Police Department in regards to setting up an interview on a Washington County man in regards to a missing person case that they were investigating. Their information indicated that the missing person, a female by the name of Athena Hobson, was last seen in the company in the accompaniment of the suspect. Assistance was provided by our agency and an interview was conducted. Based on this interview, a search warrant was obtained for the suspect's truck which had sustained major damage in an accident that occurred on March 19th here in Washington County, Virginia, involving a school bus. Uh, that accident occurred on Nordyke Road. Uh, a cell phone belonging to the missing Johnson City woman, Hobson, was located in the sub suspect's truck. A subsequent search warrant for the suspect's residence was obtained and executed on Thursday, May the 9th, 2019. Also on that date, the suspect came to the Washington County Sheriff's Office where he was interviewed by Tennessee detectives who were familiar with the missing person cases. During the interview, the suspect, James Michael Wright, age 23, of 3473 Mendota Road, Mendota, Virginia, confessed to killing three women. Wright also provided information in regards to these killings. On or about February 28, 2019, Wright allegedly shot and killed Elizabeth Marie Van Meter, age 22, of Carter County, Tennessee, according to the suspect as a result of an argument. Van Meter was reported missing by authorities on March 17, 2019. Uh, she was reported missing by her parents. On or about March 9, 2019, Wright allegedly shot and killed Jocelyn M. Also, age 17, from Cobb County, Georgia. Also, was reported missing on March 8, 2019, from that jurisdiction being Cobb County, Georgia. On or about March 17, 2019, Wright allegedly shot and killed Athena Hobson, age 25, of Johnson City, Tennessee. The suspect stated he shot Hobson and was transporting the victim in the back of his truck when her body fell out of the truck and rolled down an embankment near the bridge on Nordyke Road. He then placed her body in the river. Hobson was reported missing on March 24th, or correction, March 21st, 2019, by a cousin. On May 10th, 2019, a search warrant was conducted of the property surrounding Wright's residence. The remains of two bodies believed to be Van Meter and Ossip were recovered. One body was covered, recovered from a shallow grave. The other was uh, placed around and under some logs. Authorities continued to search for Hobson, who, according to the suspect, was thrown in the river. The suspect alleged all three shootings were accidental. An autopsy, or autopsies are currently being performed today, and we are only tentatively being able to identify Van Meter and also solely based on the suspect's statements. 
positive identica identification will be based on the uh, completed autopsy results. Through his employment as a subcontract worker for the James H. Drew Carnival, Wright became acquainted with the women. The 17-year-old female was the daughter of one of Wright's co-workers who worked with the carnival. The investigation is ongoing regarding the suspect's act activities while traveling with the carnival because, again, we know that that carnival traveled extensively, certainly throughout the East Coast. Uh, we have plans of contacting uh, jurisdictions uh, where that carnival very well may have been to see if they have missing persons. A firearm has been recovered and is believed to have been used in all three homicides. Agencies that have participated in this investigation, in addition to the Washington County, Virginia Sheriff's Office, which is the lead agency, include the FBI, United States Marshal Service, Virginia State Police, Carter County, Tennessee Sheriff's Department, and the Johnson City, Tennessee Police Department. And we certainly thank all of these agencies. Uh, it was without a doubt a unified effort to bring the uh, investigation to this point. Agencies that assisted in recovery efforts, uh, basically in looking for the, uh, the body that was allegedly thrown into the river include the Virginia State Police Med Flight, Black Diamond Search and Rescue, Washington County Life Saving Crew, Goodson Kinderhook, uh, Volunteer Fire Department, and the Green Springs Fire Department. Wright is being held without bond in the Southwest Virginia Regional Jail in Abington, Virginia. Any questions? I think we've pretty well laid out the circumstances surrounding the um, deaths at this point. Again, I have these gentlemen up here because, again, as I said earlier, uh, two of the agencies uh, had missing persons that, again, have resulted in, in homicides or believed to be homicides of these victims. Are you working with the carnival company? Um, We're still early on into that stage of it. We've got a lot of background to do. Um, and of course, we're working with the authorities in, in Georgia as well. So that'll be that'll be days coming. Basically, this individual killed three women within about an 18-day period. Do you know how long he was employed with the carnival at this point? Though? I do not at this point. That's under investigation also. As, as uh, again, Captain Blevins said, we're working with uh, that carnival to make a determination of the locations that they did uh, set up their carnivals and attempt to see if there are missing persons that might have been reported from those jurisdictions. Sheriff, are we classifying him as serial killer? I think you could say that, yes. Um, the accident that he had, um, again, this is mere speculation, but the accident he had some two days after the last killing certainly put an end to that series of incidents at that point. Did he have a criminal background prior to these murders? To my knowledge, he did not. We do not know of anything. He's 23 years old. Um, uh, he wasn't certainly on our radar as uh, being a uh, uh, in any type of criminal activity. You mentioned you would check the other locations where the carnival went. Has your investigation led you to believe that there are any other victims at this time? At this time, we do not we do not know that. Uh, we're not going to speculate on that at this point because, again, we haven't received information back from uh, these jurisdictions in regards to, to that. Portion. As you said, they travel up and down the East Coast. Is there kind of a, a range that you know? Well, the, the James Drew Carnival, of my understanding, was in our uh, county uh, and has been in our county uh, during our uh, county fair that we have in September. So all three of the victims he knew through his work in the carnival, all three of them? Well, he knew the two through his working at the carnival. The 17-year-old he knew through the uh, acquaintance of a co-worker. Uh, basically, it was the 17-year-old's uh, dad that he had worked with. Is there any type of like, sexual relationship with any of these women or was there any prior history with these women? Indications in the um, confession very well led us to believe there possibly would be. I'm not going to dwell into that based on our, again, the investigation and obviously the impending uh, trial. I, you know, I'm not sure about that. I know that question was asked, but I think certainly killing three individuals in an 18-day period 
uh, would lend itself to believe that this person uh, certainly, uh, again, based on his statements, uh, uh, although he, he stated they were accidental, uh, we find that hard to believe based on information that we have. We have not. Uh, we conducted uh, operations there in the river. We know that she was missing, I think, in mid, mid March, and um, we were checking back with the weather. We've had some high water uh, since then. I know early April we, ha we had some high water. Um, we have checked several miles downstream, um, have been unsuccessful at this point in time. We'll continue uh, the, the searches. Uh, probably they would be toned down to a certain point. I'll give an example of how far a body could travel. We had an incident that occurred of an individual that fell uh, into the south fork of the Holston River back in um, early January, late December, and we recovered his body some 12 miles below where he actually went into the water. So uh, the body could have obviously traveled um, a, number, a great distance. Well, I'm meeting with the uh, community tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Uh, they're in the community center. They had asked me to come down and certainly try to put them at ease. I feel like that certainly this is not a, it's not a situation where a uh, idea of, of what can happen certainly from the townspeople. Yes, this one individual uh, lived in the community, but it's a very, in my opinion, an isolated incident. Uh, I reported earlier that I think that I feel like the community is in no danger. Uh, obviously, these people were not from the community. They were brought in here uh, for whatever, well, whatever reason that he, he deemed to do so. Uh, but I think the community as a whole, I know a lot of the people that live in that community, good, good solid people. Uh, I know that, uh, again, they're obviously concerned about the situation and, and for uh, a good reason, but I don't think it's anything that's going to be. Uh, concerning uh, from that standpoint. Why do you think he started uh, killing these women? Wouldn't the investigation be more straightforward? We won't get into the motive at this point in time, although he did say they were accidental. Uh, we'll, uh, that will be brought up during the trial, I'm sure. I don't want to do anything to jeopardize or make statements that might jeopardize the uh, uh, upcoming trial. And just to clarify, all three women were killed in Washington that's correct. And do you, do you acknowledge or believe that they're, all three of them came here willingly or were they forced to hear this? I have no idea. Obviously, there was some communication back and forth, uh, I think, between family members, I believe, prior to. Again, uh, Sheriff Lunsford and or uh, Chief Turner may be able to allude to that. Uh, but our understanding is they, they were having some interaction with family up to a point. It appeared in Carter County is that they voluntary. Our investigation led us to believe that he picked her up in Johnson City and she came willingly with him to Washington County, Virginia. And these are all three counts of capital murder. Would there be a possibility of some kind of question of death penalty? I'm going to defer that to our Commonwealth attorney. All three are charged with capital murder. Certainly this is very early in a case like this, but the death penalty is definitely on the table. And did you have any idea beyond Ms. Hobson that he was just going to, was there any inkling that these other missing women and him, any sort of connection, or did that take everyone by surprise when he just admitted? Um, go ahead. Our investigation was initiated upon request into the Hobson case, and then the information gained from that initial interview regarding Ms. Hobson led to the information about the other victims. I was just wondering, did you, did you anticipate that? Had you at that point tied him with these other victims in any way? No, not at, the, not at that point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now he was in the crash bus two days after Ms. Hobson disappeared. That's correct. Is there any connection there? Was he trying to harm himself? I don't feel so. Uh, so I think basically, again, we did not work the wreck. Obviously, Virginia State Police handled the accident. Uh, pretty much a head-on crash. Uh, 
my understanding of what brief uh, little bit I know about it, he fell asleep or had made that statement, I believe, to, uh, to authorities. So I feel like if there wasn't any indication of him trying to do bodily harm to himself, certainly. Other questions? Well, they uh, came down and, and assisted in the recovery of evidence um, and did uh, secure a number of items from the residents. Uh, that was their responsibility. They uh, took the residents and, and uh, again, uh, secured a, a additional evidence from there. And uh, I know it's uh, an out-of-state, obviously, the 17-year-old uh, was from a, another jurisdiction, but then again, are the same with the uh, Johnson uh, or the uh, Tennessee individuals. But they assisted greatly in our uh, evidence collection as did the uh, BCI, Virginia State Police. They helped us process the scenes uh, at the location on um, Friday. Yes. Yep. Is there any type of recent history with, with serial killings here? I mean, have you guys dealt no, with sir. before? We have not. Uh, we've had a uh, killing back in 2015 that was actually as a result of a domestic up in Glade, but it, it was nothing to this point, obviously. It was an individual that uh, uh, had some issues, uh, family issues, that he uh, killed his wife and son and a, I think, uh, mother-in-law. Yes. 